The Area 51 Raid, A Warning, written by Fatty Memes. So many people may have seen the memes being posted about the Area 51 Raid. Well, I thought it was all just memes and was all jokes. And since I run a meme page for fun, I posted some of those memes. Then I got a direct message from an account with zero followers following zero people saying, I'm from the future. People go through with the raid and release creatures, information, and new weapons into the world. I didn't bother answering because he was probably just some guy trying to be funny. Then I got a phone call right after I had seen the message from an unknown caller. A deep voice that was 100% voice modifier started talking and said, I'm not kidding. I'm a time traveler. And I'm trying to warn everyone about this raid. Just listen to me. I was freaked out at this point because I had no clue how he got my number. But I was also confused if it was even the same guy. People don't just go marching into Area 51. They bring all sorts of weapons, guns, knives, baseball bats, you name it. They start attacking everyone at Area 51, and they come out successful. They storm into the building and keep attacking everyone, anyone who stands in their way. I tried to say something, but he stopped me. Don't talk. Listen. There's not enough time. Just listen. They start going through the entire base, finding information like the government is rigged, countries have unknown resources underground that could be used for different things like weapons, buildings, or making humans evolve into a stronger species. He told me that information is released about planets that have life on them. He told me about weapons that shoot lasers like in video games and how people started to use them against the guards. He said that there were different testing rooms where plants, animals, and even humans were being tested on. Then they made it to where they kept any creature that isn't supposed to be on Earth. He began by saying, The creatures they found and released were locked up and hidden for a reason. He said that all the creatures were on a certain level of danger. Level 1 was the lowest, and level 3 was the highest. They started with level 1 creatures, which were creatures like animals with two heads or humans that have been mutated and had wings or tails. Then they made it to level 2. Creatures which were creatures that looked like something from another planet. Scaly skin, claws, wings, massive teeth. Some were still animals, but were bigger than they should have been. They all had sharp teeth. When they finally made it to level three, they found creatures that were almost like bats, but they were bigger and they had no fur. These bat-like creatures had bones and ripped up military uniforms in their cells. Another creature was a skinny white creature with black eyes. And when one of the people raiding looked through the glass to see it and was staring at it, he started chanting satanic stuff and then shot himself. At the end of the hallway in this area, there was a room with cameras and buttons to lock and unlock the doors. There was one button that would unlock or lock all of them at once instead of one by one. One of the people raiding decided to press that button when no one else would, and he released all the creatures. He said that doors started opening and all the creatures went wild and started to run and fly around the Area 51 base. Some were attacking each other. The people raiding all ran through an emergency exit and found their way out of the base, where they were surrounded by more military waiting for them. Most were gunned down, and when some of the survivors began to try to tell the military what had happened, the wall suddenly exploded and all of the creatures escaped and ran different ways. The military opened fire, but some of the creatures attacked. The soldiers' weapons weren't enough, and they were all wiped out by the level 3 creatures, 
and the raiders were all killed. It was a mess. Days after the raid, cities began getting attacked by different creatures, and most were destroyed. The world became a playground for these creatures. I'm warning you now, so let others know that these people don't go through with the raid. He hung up the phone then. When I tried to call him back so that I could ask some questions, the phone wasn't even a working number. I used to work at Area 51, and I have a message for you, written by Carlos Spicy Wiener 11. Years ago, I was stationed at Area 51. I won't go into great detail about things. I signed a non-disclosure agreement when I first arrived. If they find out I leaked information, I could be locked up or worse for treason. So let me first start by saying that all of you people looking to storm the gates are, are you're just plain stupid. I say this with your safety in mind. Keep in mind that 10 years ago we used surveillance equipment that is now considered new technology by today's standards. So if you're dumb enough to try it, consider yourself warned. Come to the gates. Starting 500 plus yards out is a minefield that surrounds the entire encampment. The mines are pressure sensitive. They're able to tell the difference between wildlife and intruders. Also, there are UAVs monitoring and providing air support from high in the sky. I don't know if you've heard about the Navy testing lasers as weapons. They've had them for the last 50 years and have perfected them to one of the most deadly weapons in the arsenal. These lasers are mounted on the UAVs and can hit with pinpoint accuracy slicing a target in half within a millisecond. And all of this equipment was what we had 10 years ago. I can only imagine how these things have evolved today. If you make it close enough to the gates, you will more than likely be mowed down by one of the many, many soldiers on patrol. There's easily a battalion's worth there at all times. And let me tell you, they are hungry for someone dumb enough to try something stupid. To top it all off, the fence has enough electricity running through it to power an entire county for the next 100 years for free. So, uh, good luck with that one. And if by the power of Christ you breach the gates and then take out all the soldiers on boards, now you have to worry about the vaporizers. No, not those douchebag smoke devices that you all like so much, but the vaporizers that will turn a 300-pound man to dust in a matter of seconds. This I've seen personally. When Corporal Benson decided that he couldn't stay there anymore and wanted to leave any way possible, even if it meant killing his way out. His parents now believe that he died in battle, blown apart by an IED, with nothing left but a few pieces of skin and organs. He was a hero, that corporal. There's a lot of crazy things on that base that does not need to be in the public eye, and for good reason. I've witnessed reanimated corpses, not like the ones you see in the movies, but who knows what kind of tweaks they've done over the years. So if you break in there, you just might be the cause of a global epidemic, the likes of the Black Plague. Well, I'm going to go to sleep now because I'm probably going to need my rest to go and run and hide for letting this information out. But if I can save the lives of a few hundred people, and possibly humanity, it will be worth it unless I somehow die in my sleep tonight. It's a good thing that I sleep with my pistol. Keep an eye out for me. You might see me in the news for falling asleep behind the wheel while driving down the highway. With that said, good night and Godspeed. Area 51 is the biggest cover-up in human history, written by Greenball14. When most people hear Area 51, they think of aliens, UFO, and the government hiding out of this world beings from us. Sadly, everything you thought was in Area 51 was planted into your heads from movies and television shows, and is exactly what the government wants to be in your head. Instead of harboring alien spacecrafts and UFOs, 
The base is used for testing top secret military technology and weapons. The reason that this information is guarded so heavily is to protect it from opposing countries and anyone looking to get ahead of the United States. If you've ever wondered why such a top secret facility containing otherworldly persons, such as Area 51, would be so easily accessible, it's because they want people to be able to see and speculate about it, and not be focused on somewhere that contains true aliens. This place that contains true aliens is the Las Vegas airport. I worked there as a security guard for many years and I've seen many government secrets that 99% of Americans will never see in their lifetime. I worked in what was considered Hive 1 of 4, which consisted of primarily desk workers such as accountants, recruiters, and financial workers for the Nexus project. Hive 2 of 4 consisted of nanotechnology and chemical engineering. Hive 3 of 4 contains many experiments on the human body, such as growth hormones and seriously dangerous viruses. I had to come into contact with a living dead human body as I was passing through this level to assist in a low security testing project, which is nothing interesting enough to detail. I saw this as I passed by a thick glass wall and as I peered inside I saw what looked to be a rotting body of a man strapped to a table, squirming with low energy. However, this didn't faze me seeing as a desk worker had told me about some of the things that were in Hive 3. Hive 4 of 4 is the most secure hive that I know of. I've never been on this level, thankfully, due to the fact that there are beings beyond human comprehension here. Many times I've escorted scientists on the second floor to rooms with televisions set up, and I was able to catch tiny glimpses of extraterrestrial beings who were under surveillance in this room. One of those times, I was escorting a nice gray-haired man to this viewing room. He swung the door open, and there, on the large wall opposite to the door, was a television. It displayed footage of a gray human-sized figure, with arms as long as rakes and fingers which resembled pencils in length. It had large eyes that were extremely unproportionate to the size of its head. It was staring directly into the camera with no movement. Just the quick sight of this creature made me feel as though I wanted to vomit. Ever since then, I've never had any contact with Hive 4. Through all my time working in the base, if I learned anything, it would be to never believe what the government tells you. Did you ever play Area 51? Written by Ingraham Lincoln Did you ever play Area 51? I sure did. As a kid, I lived next to a pizza parlor slash arcade. I'd sink a couple of dollars and quarters pretty regularly into one particular cabinet to play a first-person shooter on rails about an alien invasion on a military base in Nevada. The dream I'm recollecting is from that time period. I still remember the wave tops of it, however. In the dream, I awoke to my dark bedroom... I hear the faint buzz of the TV in the living room. The kind of TV that's thicker than it is wide and it makes a loud crack when you turn it on. The only light in the house is coming from the glow of the television. And, to my excitement, there's a light gun connected to the TV. Exactly like the ones used to play Area 51 in the arcade. I played Nintendo 64 as a kid, but as I looked at the TV cabinet, all I see is a VCR and a 3VHS box with a radioactive symbol emblazoned on the side. I flip the box over and I see a man in a hazmat suit in a menacing pose. The cannon fodder for rail shooters is always those low-resolution video clips of real people in costumes jumping from behind cover, only to fire a few rounds and then hop back into cover. This should be easy. I'm a good shot. I slot the first VHS tape in and dream logic is dictating that this is a perfectly normal platform for a video game. There's no start screen, there's no cutscenes, just a large empty military style hangar. This game wastes no time getting to the good stuff. As the camera starts to move through the level, I steady my aim at the television. 
In a few seconds, I start to feel this dread. There's no animations. No menacing, hazmat-clad enemies. But it definitely feels like there should be. I stand there in my living room, and I realize that it's much darker than usual. The glow of the TV is barely illuminating the furniture. A feeling of dread begins to set in as I realize that my house feels just as lonely as the research lab displayed on the screen. Where's my family? And where did this game come from? I put the gun down and I stare transfixed at the TV as I'm led down empty office hallways, hangered catwalks, and underground bunkers. This game is boring, but I can't shake the feeling that it wasn't supposed to be like this. As I'm shown a mission complete screen at the end of the level, I pop the tape out of the VCR and I decide to shove the second one in. Surely they both can't be glitched out. However, the second tape is more of the same. I'm being led deeper into an underground bunker this time, but there's no one there. And the feeling of dread sinks a little deeper as I realize that the game has not glitched. Something has caused the compound's workers to flee or to hide. The last room in this level is a blast door with signs of recent activity strewn about with a sort of haste. It's as if someone in this game decided to hold themselves up in a panic room. The same radioactive symbol on the box is stenciled onto the door. I pop the tape out and I reach for the third one in the box. But as my finger touches it, I realize something. This isn't a game. This isn't a rail shooter. This is camera footage of some abandoned facility who knows where. The hazmat-clad hordes that I had envisioned were not waiting to pop out and shoot at me. They were taken deeper into the bunker by some unimaginable horror. I know that the third tape will reveal what is inside that room. Bodies. And with those bodies, whatever monster that's been feeding on them is locked in that room. If I put that third tape in the door, it will open not only on my screen in my home, but in real life somewhere in the desert base where this footage was taken. I aim my light gun at the third tape and I blow it away in a flash of sparks. Then I awake to a sunlight-filled house and the voices of my family.